everybody and welcome back to Welcome Grove Homestead. We are clearly not at the homestead right we are now. not at the homestead, that's <laughs> absolutely correct. We are in a car. We are in a car. And we are in a car because we are headed to our dear friend's farm, the that's fields. That's right. <laughs> Josh called David and David is going to explain why we are driving to their house right now. So Josh calls as we're like in the middle of like planning out our chicken room, a project that you'll be absolutely thrilled to see when we finally get it all figured out because it's awesome. Uh, but we're sitting there all talking in a group and uh, Josh calls and says, hey, I got a cow and I need to both lasso it and give it a shot and treat what could either be an infection or a hernia. And I was wondering if you'd like to let your viewers come see it. We're like, uh, we're always down for an adventure. So we're headed over to the uh, family, the Fields Family Farm, uh, which you can follow on Facebook if you like. They have a little page called the Fields Family Farm Adventure, uh, and they would love to meet you. Uh, and we are going to head that direction and see if we can't help them out as a good neighbor does. Also, because any excuse to see our friends is good. But anyway, also big shout out to uh, uh, Amanda's mom and dad for taking care of the younger two kiddos, uh, milking and making dinner while we run off to be uh, friends and extra hands on their farm. So yes, because it seems that if anything's going to go wrong, it's going to happen at chore time. That's hundred percent accurate. Yeah, the video that I just put out uh, right before this one. Y'all saw that we had like an interruption with Miss Jane having an abscess suddenly draining. So, I mean, things just seem to happen right at chore time for us. Maybe we should move chore time. We should move chore time? Yeah, then nothing bad happens. Yeah, move it to eight. Either that then or the bad the things eight. move their time schedule too. <laughs> All right, we are here at the Fields Farm. Heading out to look at the cow in question, steer in question, the animal in question. Which one is it? A steer? Gizmo. Steer. It's a steer. We're gonna go see the steer in question. <laughs> Alright, so Gizmo. Be the down. the Thank steer with more. the issue. They are hoping it's an infection and not a hernia. If at first the lasso fails, feed him. All right, this is gonna suck because we gotta do one in each side. Oh yeah, that's fun. Right. Where are we going? You're gonna come over here and watch. So this muscle up right here, right, right the thigh, <laughs> up towards the shoulder, the muscle. I guess you don't want to get it in their jugular. Okay. And you pull back slightly on the plunger to make sure you're not in a blood vessel when you go in. So I'm guessing, right here. You can slap the spot before you stick them, it helps. Ooh. All right, and then pull back on the plunger, make sure you're not in a blood vessel, and then go for it. I'm saying you should be doing this. Everybody's got to do it sometime. <laughs> and you can rub that spot hard and it helps. You're going to have a lump there. And are we going subcutaneous or like all the way in? Subcutaneous. Right under the skin, huh? Yep. Yeah. There you go, get a tent. <coughs> Don't go through the tent. It burns, just so you know. There you go. Buddy. It's for your own good. Then rub it hard, it helps dissipate it, and it helps get into their system That's faster. That's my foot! Yep, good spot. There we go. Sad cow with a poke. A double poker. He had a poker face. Wow. Huh. Yeah. So the treatment was relatively quick. Very low. Oh, Rowan's not But now we have to go and fix the fence that got broken when they were chasing the cows. Yeah, so. It's open everywhere. 
there's an electric wire that got broken. So now I gotta go fix it. Because that's having animals. Oh, and here, let's see. I might be able to show you his hernia if I can get a decent angle on him. All right, so Gizmo, the one with the hernia, is the red and white one. It's really hard to kind of see. Let's see if I can get super helpful he's behind another animal. So he is a steer, so he does have, you know, boy bits. Oh, really? That's helpful. He's going to stay hiding behind there. Okay, so now you can see right in front of his boy bits. He has that lump there. Now, everybody else in here is a heifer, so it's kind of hard to show you a comparison of normal, but it shouldn't be that bulby right there. That's basically where his umbilical cord was. It's his, it's his belly button. That is the most common location for what's called an umbilical hernia because that used to actually be an opening when he was a fetus. So it creates a weak spot there and sometimes you end up with a hernia. Meanwhile, I'm over here talking about cow belly buttons and they're over here fixing the fence. And then right here on this where I twisted it, we'll just need to tight twist that the rest of the way. So Mr. Gizmo here got his antibiotic shot. The hope is that he will improve and that'll be that. The general theory is that if it's an infection that maybe a horse fly bit him and it just got infected because that's not exactly the cleanest area on a cow. Uh, if that's not the case and it is a hernia, it's looking a little grim for him because a hernia is very serious. Loop of intestine comes through that hole and basically there's a hole in the muscle of the, uh, the abdominal cavity. So basically the muscle that holds all of your intestines inside your body. So there's a little hole in the case of a hernia. Shouldn't be one, but it's called an umbilical hernia because when he was a fetus inside his mom, that was how he got his nourishment was through the umbilical cord and it came through a hole in his stomach. When he was born, that hole closes up. You know, they go on and live cow lives. But in some cases, that hole just doesn't quite seal up all the way or it's weak or something just happens and a loop of intestine can get through a weak spot in the muscle wall. And when that happens, the muscle is not going to open up anymore to allow blood flow for that intestine. So it will actually cut off blood supply and it can kill that section of intestine, which in turn leads to sepsis and the animal will die a horrible, horrible death. So if it is a hernia, it is better to put him down and be able to get the beef and he gets to still serve the purpose of being a beef animal without having to go through suffering. So those are the just kind of decisions you have to make as a livestock owner. Alternatively, Lily was actually asking, is it something that can be operated on? What's the surgical options if, you know, maybe they want to let him live for another year and then harvest him? It does not make sense in a financial aspect. If you are raising an animal for beef, vet bills are very expensive and surgical vet bills for large animals are extra super expensive and to find a vet who actually would perform that surgery would be tricky unless you're going to like a university, like a specialist, someone who actually like does this. It's not really common to do a hernia surgery, at least not on cows. Well, we're pulling for him. Yeah. Her. Him. 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 <laughs> All right, so Caleb won our lassoing contest. But just so you all know what it feels like to be a cow. Jeez, no, no, <laughs> no, no! <laughs> okay, normally the cows don't run away. I'm just... <laughs> I think... Wait. some lasso on them. Uh, they might make a little less noise. They might. Good <laughs> <laughs> Lasses are so much fun. Oh, sadness. Lasses are so much fun. You can make friends. You can catch friends. I can get caught. I can get hit in the head. All right, but for real, this is what a cow sees when they're staring right at the farmer. Are you ready? Yeah, but they're not usually staring right at the farmer. If you break my camera, I will break you. He didn't. See. 
That's called a threat. Now on YouTube, you're not allowed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always an adventure getting to go to other people's properties, but it's extra fun to go to friends' properties. Absolutely. <laughs> and, I mean, it's not always the best of circumstances when we have to go out and... Got me. I've been roped. <laughs> you know, my whole childhood, I always wanted to be a cowboy, but I didn't realize that meant being a cow. <laughs> You're a cow man. I'm a, I'm a man. <laughs> I am a man. <laughs> anyway, man, it's not man, always man, the best man, of circumstances man. that bring us to friends' properties, but we still manage to have a good time. It's way more fun coming for bonfires. Just saying, cornhole. Side but side, we are right? thrilled yeah. to come. Yeah, side by side. <laughs> We're thrilled to come whenever there's a need. And uh, Josh, you guys are always coming over if we need anything. Absolutely. It's just kind of the fun, friendly family community we got going on. Well, Good what's time. also great is that we are able to learn from the experience without having to go through it ourselves. We all get to kind of learn it all together. Yep. That was the first time I'd ever poked a cow. I mean, anything. I pierced the cow. You guys saw that. Is that, that the first video. animal you've given a shot to? No, I've done, I've done goats, but never, uh, never cows. So, first time for everything. Yeah. I poked that one twice. <laughs> Shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so real quick, subcutaneous. That was the term I randomly just threw out because I've heard you throw it out. Explain the difference between uh, in a muscle and not in a muscle. Okay, so there are different abbreviations for an injection. A subcutaneous or a sub Q injection is one that goes under the skin but not in the muscle. IM injections would be intramuscular, where you're stabbing right into that muscle to get that medicine into the muscle. To be honest, I was really glad we didn't have to stab a muscle. <laughs> that was like, that was, that was a good way to learn it first. <laughs> but then you have intravenous. And then there's Ugh. intravenous. Ugh. That's which the real would, fun one. Which, That's where you send them to the, to the planet Venus for them to do your medications for you. Is that how that works? No. I dropped out of med school. Probably, <laughs> probably, best that probably way. the one that most people are most familiar with, which is IV. Oh. Oh. Which goes right into the vein and into the animal. Never into an artery. It goes into a vein, not the artery. Fun fact. Now, we don't usually like to give antibiotics to animals unless we absolutely have to. This is one of those situations where, you know, you kind of have to do what you got to do to make sure the cow survives. Um, if there's a mass infection that's even worse, that's not any good for it. So, yeah. kind of a, well, we're not going to slice it open in a field. No, not so much. So. I just feel like I'm really accessorized nicely. <laughs> Getting. It's a good look. It's a good look. Yes. All right, you ready to close this out? I think so. Everyone's leaving. Yep. Everyone's leaving. All, all the something. young people are bored. You what? They're chasing a bunny. They're, they're, cha chasing, they're a chasing a bunny. bunny. As always, this is your country nerd with a goat herd. And friends with a cow herd. And friends with a cow herd. And, and a I couple have dudes in a mill. <laughs> and my <laughs> own cow herd. And yes, a couple of the mill dudes. <laughs> saying you can grow, grow where, where you're, you're planted, planted. and let's you can be decorated <laughs> yes <laughs> let's do this oh my gosh <laughs>